Have you found yourself wondering if you're cut out to be a pilot? Well, here's my advice to find out if you are. One of the first questions you might want to ask yourself is, why do I want to be a pilot? And this isn't meant to be some uh, introspective look at yourself, but more uh, realistic. Are you wanting to do this as a career or are you wanting to do this as a hobby? And you can take the hobby side of things as far as you want. You can take the career thing as far as you want. But the two kind of different sides um, are going to tell you more or less how you want to set up for this endeavor. With a hobby, there's no restriction on how quickly you need to get your hours, what type of ratings you need to get, what planes you need to be proficient in. With a career, the way to make yourself hireable, depending on what field of aviation you want to go into, is going to be very specific. It's going to be regulated. You're going to have to put in the work to get specific requirements in order to be able to go on to the job that you want. So after you've determined why you want to be a pilot, let's look and see if you are physically capable. And for that, you're gonna to need to go and visit your local AME or Aviation Medical Examiner. Now, these are regular doctors, but they've also been trained a little bit uh, more on the FAA regulations to make sure that they can service you as a pilot. You'll need to see them maybe once a year, maybe every six months, depending on how far up you get, or maybe as little as every five years to renew your medical if you are going the hobby route. But they have specific requirements that they have to meet that they're required to meet by the FAA, and they'll be able to give you an exam and tell you if you physically qualify for those. Now going into the mental aspects of if you are cut out to be a pilot, you've gotta be coachable. You've gotta be flexible. You've got to have good study habits or work to develop those study habits. Everything else can be taught. Um, being good under stress is a bonus, but that's something that we are required to cover when we're covering emergency operations in any sort of pilot curriculum, and so we'll be able to teach you those skills. Finding a good instructor, finding a good flight school are going to be key to making sure that you learn all the skills that you need to to succeed at becoming a pilot, but it starts with you. If you don't have the motivation to get yourself up and go fly, even maybe when the weather stinks, even maybe when you're not feeling the best, but you're okay, Everything else is teachable, but you have to have that motivation to make sure that you can get up and put in the work. It's important to remember that in your flight training, you may not always be comfortable, and that's why you have an instructor with you. And that could be physically comfortable. Maybe it's a really bumpy day up there. Maybe you're not comfortable landing at a maybe a narrower airport or a shorter airport or talking to tower or not talking to tower, depending on where you're flying it. And that's why you're paying that instructor. And a good instructor should always make you feel comfortable or at least endeavor to make you feel comfortable, but it's impossible. We can't do that 100% of the time. And so even if the weather looks bad, even if it's really turbulent, that's the, the, the pushback I get quite a bit from, uh, from students is, oh, I don't wanna go fly because it's gonna be super bumpy up there. It's gonna be really windy. Well, that's the time you wanna go up with an instructor. That's what's going to make you good um, because we're not here for pleasure cruises, right? We're here to train you how to fly an airplane. And if you've only flown an airplane in the smoothest, calmest conditions ever, that's all you'll ever be able to fly in. But if you get up there with an experienced pilot and you're able to fly in some of those bumps and other um, stuff up there, right? Other conditions, then you're gonna be totally proficient to keep yourself and anyone flying with you safe. And after answering those questions for yourself, if you're still not sure, go visit your local flight school or come see us at Thrust Flight for a Discovery Flight. To learn more about Discovery Flights, check out our video here with Liz. If you have any questions on the topics we cover today, leave a comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.